Joining us here at the 33rd Annual San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium is Dr. Sarah Hurwitz. She is Director of the Breast Cancer Program at UCLA. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. I know you're a real trooper. You're a little bit under the weather with a cold, but thank you for still, you have, you have information to share and we appreciate it's it. It's my pleasure. Let's talk about the design of the study you've presented. So this is a neoadjuvant uh, tissue acquisition clinical trial in HER2 positive patients with non-metastatic breast cancer. Patients are randomly assigned to receive one of three treatment arms. Um, all of the treatment arms involve uh, the use of taxotere and carboplatin. Uh, there's one arm that has lapatinib, one uh, trastuzumab, and one both agents. There's a run-in phase with just the HER2-targeted therapy, and biopsies are done before and after the run-in phase, which is three weeks. Um, this allows us to look at molecular markers at the end. Um, the primary endpoint of the study is pathologic complete response rate, and our goal is to ultimately accrue 140 patients to this study. Why did you choose the TC backbone? The TC backbone was studied in the BCIRG006 study um, in which uh, patients with HER2 positive early breast cancer were randomly assigned to ACT, ACTH, both anthracycline containing compounds, um, or TCH. Um, the TCH arm uh, appeared to be as good as the ACTH arm but had less toxicity and for this reason we brought it forward into this neoadjuvant design. Can you summarize the data you presented here in San Antonio? Sure. Uh, this was a preliminary analysis of the first 20 patients enrolled, all of whom received all four study drugs. The reason we did this with the first 20 patients is we had a dose escalation to make sure that all four study drugs were well tolerated. Uh, so the first 20 patients enrolled were, were uh, looked at and the results were presented here. Would you describe the PCR findings? For the four-arm combination, um, 20 patients went through the study. Three patients came off the study early before completing protocol-specified therapy because of adverse events, two diarrhea-related events and one neutropenic-related event. 17 patients went through all protocol-specified therapy and definitive surgery, nine of whom had a pathologic complete response. Uh, so that was a 45% intent to treat path CR rate, and if you look at the evaluable patients of 18, it was a 50% path CR rate. What about the issue of toxicity? So in terms of cardiac toxicity, this is an important question because we're using two HER2-targeted agents. Uh, in this particular study, there were no patients who developed congestive heart failure. Uh, furthermore, there were no patients who had a drop in their left ventricular ejection fraction of greater than 10%. Um, the most common toxicities in terms of grade 3, 4 AEs was diarrhea, which was seen in a third of patients, uh, and neutropenia with infection, which again was seen in about a fifth of patients. Um, other toxicities were the commonly seen toxicities related to chemotherapy. Why do you see this study as being so important? What's important about this study is not necessarily the clinical endpoint of path CR, although that's interesting, but more so is looking at the tissue and um, looking at the gene expression profiles uh, in patients who receive each of these agents and trying ultimately to determine if there are markers that will predict response or resistance to these targeted therapies. There were other neoadjuvant studies presented here at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium that generated excitement. What are your thoughts on them? So the first one was the Gepar Quinto study, and that was an interesting study um, in which patients were assigned to receive an anthracycline-based regimen concurrently with Herceptin or an anthracycline-based regimen concurrently with lapatinib, and all patients went on to receive a taxane plus the HER2-targeted agent. And what that study showed in terms of the pathologic complete response was what the chemo and the Herceptin arm had a higher pathologic complete response rate that was statistically significant. That study, unlike our study, didn't have um, a run-in phase of the biologic agent alone and didn't have tissue acquisition the way that our 
SARS does before and after treatment. The second study was the NeoAlto study. Uh, that was a 500 patient study, and that study was much more like ours. Um, it had a run-in phase of six weeks of lapatinib or trastuzumab or the combination of the two, followed by taxol chemotherapy plus the targeted agent. And there were tissue acquisition um, there was tissue acquisition that was done before and after the run-in agent. So they're going to be able to look at molecular markers like us. And I think the two studies, uh, the results from this, will be complementary in many ways. What is the road ahead for your area of research? In terms of HER2 targeted agents, I think it's a really exciting time to be treating HER2 positive breast cancer. Um, there are a lot of new agents, pertuzumab, TDM1, everolimus, uh, multiple other agents that are targeting different parts of the pathway um, that are showing incredibly promising data. There was a study presented today, again neoadjuvant study, um, called Neosphere that was looking at pertuzumab and trastuzumab together and the combinatorial um, arm had really terrific data that's very exciting. So I think um, we are going to be able to start getting at patients who have uh, resistant disease um, which really is about over 50% of the patients treated with Herceptin have resistant disease and so we're going to be able to impact on these patients in the very near future. Best of luck in helping those patients going forward. Thank you so much. Dr. Sarah Hurwitz from UCLA spending a few minutes with us here in San Antonio about her work in breast cancer research. Now let's see if we can find a cure for the common cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right.